This is my casting corporation. Inspired by this part. But it was uh, during the time of G. Abadara will know, and um, black Africans were becoming very, very active and demanding uh, independence. And my father worked for um, the government. He was um, a civilian in the Air Force of Zimbabwe. They called them civilians. In other words, those people who worked for the Air Force but who were not military, whose duties were civilian. Um, and um, so my father was free to participate in political issues as opposed, as opposed to his colleagues who were in the, in the military. And uh, very often my father would be arrested um, and he would be away from home for a long time. And we were kids and we would, we would see him when he comes back and um, it, 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 ate, it ate my, my heart and I became quite aware of uh, the inequalities that were uh, happening in our, in, in our country. So my political consciousness started at, at a very, very early age, a, a very, a very early age. And as I grew up, obviously, that was when uh, Zapu was waging a war uh, uh, for independence. And uh, later on, obviously, Zanu, Zanu uh, broke away, was uh, formed, um, and also it started waging a war from the east, whilst Zapu was waging from the north. But uh, as a family, we, we remained uh, rooted uh, with Zapu. And uh, at independence, I was too young to, to vote, but I was in Matebelele. So I, w I went to school in Matebelele. And I, all my working career was in Matebelele. I know Matebelele from the north to the south. I lived north, I lived in Victoria Falls. I know Dente Wange. Um, south, I went as far as Pine Bridge, Plum Tree. So I, and I know a lot of places in Matebelele. I actually feel at, more at home in Matebelele than uh, in Mashonale. And it also reflects even in my family. I've got um, um, my wife. Actually, when we are at home, um, we 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 don't. We, it just happens naturally. We might speak in in the valley, or we might find ourselves speaking in Shona or in English. We don't quite choose any language. It just happens naturally. And my children as well. I actually have children who speak in the valley fluently. Uh, probably more fluently than, than, than me. And I have got other grandchildren who can't speak Shona. Uh, I'm just mentioning this so that I give you a perspective of who I am as an individual and probably why I very much um, my heart is with Zapu. And obviously the main thing is that Zapu is the, the party that, that brought our independence. If our history is, is to be told correctly, uh, we all know that uh, if it wasn't for uh, Zapu moving towards um, um, establishing um, a, 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 an army to wage a standard, standard warfare rather than guerrilla warfare, uh, the uh, Smith's regime was not going to agree to go to the table for talks. It was because Zapu had, uh, had, had, had upped, upped the hand, so to speak, and uh, there was every risk that um, Smith's regime was going to be embarrassed in the battlefield. That's how the Smith's regime agreed to go to uh, the Lancaster House Conference. It wasn't because, like we are told, that Zanu PF, they fought this war, they did what, they brought this claim down. All those, in, uh, uh, um, if you are going to be talking of the major battles that we, uh, that we know happened in Zimbabwe, they were executed by Zap. And uh, also, I like the ideology of Zap. It is rooted in human rightism. 
and I happen to be a human rights person myself. So um, it's no surprise that uh, despite all that is happening in, 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 in the country, and, and all, despite all the hype of, 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 about other political parties, I still, my heart still remains in up because that's the party that represents um, my interests and that's the, that's the party that I see has the potential to bring our country to normalcy again. Now I'm going, I'm going to human rights. Um, human rights, I got involved in, in human rights again, it just happened naturally as I was observing bad things happening to other people around me and to myself as well. And then I got an interest in human rights. And I'm very, very active in human rights. Um, some of you meet me. I've met so many people. I've met the chief of many places, uh, demonstrating and doing so many things. Um, as far up in Scotland, if I remember well, at the, at, at the embassy in London, many other places. I've seen some faces here from Zapu. And all the time, the common thing about what we will be doing is we'll be demanding basic human rights, we'll be demanding that authorities respect people's rights. And what are human rights? Human rights is... Um, it's a very difficult thing to describe, but the best way I can put it is that once a person is born, they are born with inherent rights. Everybody is born equal, and they have got inherent rights by virtue of being a human being. So they are entitled to protection. They are entitled to certain freedoms. Those should be guaranteed. And human rights evolved over a long period from as early as 1750 BC when uh, it was it King Hapa or something, some, something like that, um, actually wrote laws that sought to limit the powers of uh, the king and that sought to protect the weak in society. They evolved over the centuries until it got to the 20th century, that's when there was the most marked uh, evolvement of human rights. That was when uh, slavery was abolished, and that was when also um, women were given equal rights to, to men. And that was also the period that the United Nations adopted a document a universal document with that stipulated 30 human rights and uh, one of those rights is the right to life and uh, they, we also have rights in uh, a political party uh, like what's happening in our country uh, where in Zimbabwe where uh, just being belonging to a, an opposition political party becomes a crime and you die for it. So, Basically, that, that is what you, you, you human rights are. You also have the right, for example, for those uh, people in the diaspora. If you are being persecuted in your country, you've got a right to seek asylum in another state. And you've got a right to be protected by that state. So, for example, asylum, people, some people look down upon it. Um, but it is a human right. It is a right, you have got a right to seek asylum if you are being persecuted in your own country. And that, I think there are many people from Zimbabwe who fall in that category. And there are many people from Zimbabwe who are still going through the process of seeking asylum. You should not feel ashamed of that. It is a human right. There are so many other human rights I could talk about, but like I said, they are threats. In fact, the, 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 the number is just too, too, too many for me to go into detail without being told to cut short my, my speech. But yeah, basically the association, I'm not putting them in any order, but I'm just mentioning them that so that people are aware that these things are your rights. You have got a right to say what you want to say. You have got a right to associate with who you want to associate. This also extends to even politics. 
you should not be shy to associate yeah, yeah. And that, is, that is human rights. When you now look at human rights, because they are seeking the freedoms of an individual, they tend to clash with governments. And why is that? Politics, by its nature, is a game of power. So governments, they want to limit the power of citizens. And that's where we clash with them as, as human rights activists, as human rights people. And that's why, that's, that, that's how we find ourselves having common ground with especially polit uh, opposition, uh, political parties in any government. Because the opposition is usually raising the same concerns about the ill treatment or persecution of citizens. And we as human rights people, we are fighting the same battle. We are fighting again, for example, when we talk of Zimbabwe, for example, we know our government, we know our, our government, our leaders, from, the, from independence, from as early as the early 80s. They committed a genocide in Zimbabwe, um, in Mate, Midlands and Matebele, but it was most pronounced in Matebele. Conservatively, more than 20,000 20, people were murdered in cold blood in Zimbabwe. It's a genocide that most people don't want to talk about. They don't feel comfortable to talk about, especially in earshot of the of the Zimbabwean government, because it's a very sensitive issue and is an issue that I think is the one that is actually uh, determined the progress of uh, our politics in Zimbabwe. The people who are in power right now, uh, Emerson Munangagwa. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, the army people, Chiwenga, and all those senior army people, they, were, they played an active role in the Kukura wound. And that is why you find they are, pe they are prepared to kill right today. If you, raise your, if, if you try to raise your voice, they are prepared to kill you. Why? Because if you remove them from power, they are going to face the music. Obviously, Jail is waiting for them. They will be tried in any court of law, and their cases are quite obvious. What, what they did was um, a, a genocide, and they don't want to face that humiliation. That's why you find, I always say, um, I don't think the regime in Zimbabwe is going to be removed by politics. I know most people don't agree with me, but I don't see how those people are going to hand over power just because they've been defeated in elections. It's going to take something more than um, elections to remove that, that regime. Citizens will need to rise up. Maybe it might be at a stage where they are going to be protecting their votes, or even before, but I, I believe it's going to take more than an election to remove the regime in Zimbabwe because of the atrocities, especially in Bukura Wundi. But obviously, over the years as well, uh, they've, they've killed people, they've uh, in cases of enforced disappearance. You will talk, you can, there are so many of them, but the most notable of them will be like Paul Chisuze, for example, who disappeared in 12, 2012. We have got Itai Zamara, who disappeared. Um, in 2015, there are so many others. We can talk of people like Kane Kala. More recently, we can talk of the likes of more Blessing Ali. And so there are so many. They, they continue to commit these atro atrocities, but their motivation basically is self-preservation. So that regime is not going to be removed by mere election. That's, that's my thinking. But obviously, elections can act as a catalyst when the regime has been defeated in, in elections, and when they refuse to uh, hand over power, perhaps citizens can then rise up to um, protect their vote. Thus, as far as I'm concerned, concerned that's how elections will help in Zimbabwe. But otherwise, I believe elections on their own will not change the things in Zimbabwe. So that is the connection between um, Human rights and politics, obviously, I've spoken of Kukura Wundi. Those people were killed. Uh, their rights to life. 
was taken away. So there are many other uh, other rights. So, so so too many to speak of. I spoke of asylum. I spoke of freedom of speech, freedom of association, um, education, health. All those things that we are lacking in Zimbabwe right now. Everything that is not working in Zimbabwe right now, you can actually associate it, associate it with a human right. So human rights are basically uh, is something that is inherent in a human being when they are born. And it basically defines our life and your life, and I believe it's something that is worthwhile fighting for. And when we see people, for example, um, demonstrating at the Zimbabwe Embassy or wherever here in the United, United Kingdom, especially Zimbabwe, I would urge all of us to take part. It's, it's, you don't need any qualifications, but all you need is to be there to raise your voice and then it will change. With time, it changes things. All change that came over the years, like the emancipation of women, the equality of women, it was through people raising their voices and campaigning to, for, for that change. It might take a long time, but as long as the people keep talking about it, raising their voices, change will come. That's what I would say about human rights today. Thank you so much. Basically, I think that's what Karamanzira uh, is saying. And Ufunda uh, pay. And you realize the more you learn, the more you know how much you don't know. So I think let's give another round of applause to Mr. Karamanzira. And I thank him on two fronts because he's killed two birds with one stone. He's done the first one of giving the history of Zambu and he's given his talk as well. So thank you, Mr. Karamazi. Uh, people, I know we are all hungry. So let's, let's eat. So what, what, what we're going to do now for 15 minutes, the DJ will, will, will play something and everyone will be free to, to mingle and dance while we have some food. And uh, then after that, we'll ask, um, we'll have another speaker that will come and speak to us. So for now, Mr. DJ, uh, please give us something. People, can you stand up and go and get some food and let's, let's mingle for the next 15, 20 minutes. Nothing will move you to Nadine. 
combat, Mouti, as I was feeling our man of the combat. What do I make combat? Then I should have a young Kaya and also see that I put up. Then you know, far as Rabbit with him was up. He's up, Matupa. He's up, Masuka.
Bona Rosa Cato, a tua bona suna, Vanigas. Catichina. Isso aí é que vai dar na hora da tua assistência. Sim, irá me trabalhar. O que é que eu me pergunto? O que é que eu me pergunto? O que é que eu me pergunto? I 
Aula là. C'est la pratique de la là. C'est les. C'est programme. C'est les. C'est la vente à 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 la vente à
And yet outside of that sitting room, Blauayo was busy doing what Blauayo was doing at the time, in Dutu Zetu. But those four were in the house busy. They were crafting a generation. They were crafting a nation to be. A nation to be. This means it's less so. You are only four or five in the room, and yet you have the, the courage, the audacity to say, we are crafting a nation to be. They did that. And here we are, Namtanj. Here we are, Namtanj, as Zimbabwe, from those heady days. I know things are very bad, they're kind of tough, difficult. We are seeing something that we didn't think we'd ever see in our time. That under a black government, a revolutionary government, we would have political prisoners. Shocking. Political prisoners. Then pray tell, what was the revolution about? If in this day and age, a government, a sitting government, cannot allow the citizen to speak their mind freely. What was the effort for? That's a damning indictment upon Zanupir. And there are many other issues that I could go into, which we all know, that are damning in themselves. But today I thought I would bring in something that gives us our own control, something that gives us our own power, that we can focus upon. When we look at the situation of the genocide, Ekai, whether you call it genocide or whether you call it crimes against humanity, it's the same label. The death of between 20,000 to 40,000 people, unarmed. That's a damning indictment. Doesn't matter where you come from. It's a damning indictment. For us, we've been very clear of how we should be dealing with the matter. And that is to deal with it in a judicial process. And that judicial process, when you deal with something like that, leads to something very, very profound. Very profound, which we have started already ourselves. Because when you go into a judicial process and it is established that the government of the day or the political party was instrumental, had purpose, had aim to facilitate those crimes against humanity, that genocide. Then, in the term of Zimbabwe, here, Zapu, it comes to you. Why am I saying that? By the judicial process, it means there's only one root. And that root says that that political party that did those things has to be banned. It is banned within the country, it is banned within the region, it is banned internationally. We're not talking fairy tales, we're not talking academic tales, we are talking facts and we are talking legalities. 
that as we're gathered here in Leicester today, Zahn, if there's a new government in Zimbabwe in 2023, it is 99.9% .9 certain that Zahn PF will be a banned organization within two years from now. Just think about that for a moment. Here we're talking about the region. We are talking about the African Union. We are talking about the European Union. We are talking about the United Nations. Following the footsteps of a judicial process saying, Zahle PF, you are now a banned organization. You are now a prescribed organization. And other countries will go even a step further and say you are now a terrorist organization. Zapu, it therefore means that you will now be the only surviving revolutionary party. And I must repeat myself, this is not dreaming, this is not a fairy tale, this is not an academic discussion, this is factual. Factual. I say factual because right now we are in contact, we are in consultations, we are working with people like the Bingham Foundation after the Lord Chief Justice Bingham of the United Kingdom. Here, on precisely that. To say in the event, in the event we have a transition, 2023, the clock is ticking very fast that Zahn and PF will be a prescribed organization. It is exactly the same thing if you look at what happened in Europe during the Second World War. It was impossible for the world to condemn Adolf Hitler but still allow the Nazi party to exist. That's what we're talking about. And so it brings a challenge to you, Zahn. Are you ready for it? What will you do as the only surviving revolutionary party? What processes, what things do you have in place to do these kind of things? My challenge to Zahn would be, since we are talking about this matter, that yes, as a political party, you should be putting your right foot forward in the issue of the crimes against humanity, in the issue of the genocide. After all, you, Zampu, were closest, closest victims to all that happened. And if you put your foot forward, as Wabu Karaman was talking about human rights, if you put your foot forward, you'll be amazed at the resources and the help and the institutional help you will find all over the world, even here in the United Kingdom. You will be inundated because you are reporting things that came from the coal face. So even as a political party, then that too will assist you in your efforts to galvanize your support, to bring your support together so you can do those things. So I would urge you to put that on your table as well, to say this is something that as a political party we should be doing to go forward with that. It will open doors. It will get you into offices in the region, in Europe, in the African continent, in the African Union, in Sadak, and all over, because you'll be 
fighting for a noble cause. So, with those words, I hope it brings some goal, some targets to aim for. To say that as long as we're going forward, this is something that we could do. To go forward and try and prepare for what is about to come. That eventuality, which is on its way. I'm still championing your cause as well. Back in Zimbabwe, the issue of what happened to Joshua Mkabogo Airport, the banner, the stand over there, that they took down without consulting, without having a talk with anybody whatsoever. And so we are still saying that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there should have been consultations with the Gomo family, with Zahu, with the city of Blawayo, with everyone in the region before they stood up on that dreadful day to dismember and to tarnish the image of the great man in that particular way. Coming to the modern day here today, we are still on that challenge. I saw some of you talking about the songs and the dances that you wanted to do. We are still after, I am still after, was it 20 or 50 videos that we were looking for? Those 20 or 50 videos, you will be amazed at what they will do. I say it purely because people are always getting in touch with me on social media, wherever it is, to say, Dwayne, do you know this song by Zapu? Do you know this revolutionary song? Who sang that? Who did what? But you are the custodians of those songs. You know those songs. You know how to do it, do it. The Zapu way and not the Koto Wesizu way. You know that. In order to bridge that gap between the war veterans and the new generation, bring those things out. Bring them back in again. You will see the link between yourselves and the children that are there. And it is the link of the children that I'm looking at we are here in the UK. What are your children doing right now? What are your grandchildren doing right now? Are they in Zafu? Do they help out? How do they do things? I'm talking about finding a way to bring them in so that they are part and parcel of you and even part and parcel of this country. And it is not cloud cuckoo land stuff I'm talking about. Only a few days ago, a few days ago, we saw the children of foreigners in the United Kingdom. Let me say that again. We saw the children of foreigners in the United Kingdom shake Her Majesty's government to the ground. Mr. Sunak, Chancellor of the Sikha, Javid, Minister of Health, Ibrahim, High Member of 1922 Committee. They have sunk their roots in here and made a difference. Let's get our children also to do the same. Because the diaspora generation is not going away. Some of you may say, yes, I am weary, Kaya Mina. I'm going back at Kaya. But some of your children, some of your nephews, grandchildren and likes will say, uh-uh, this is home for me. And if they say this is home for me, have you educated them enough? 
to make sure that if they come, if they become a minister of state here in the UK government, they can be also be a Zapu member. How wonderful would that be? How wonderful would that be if there were government ministers in the United Kingdom, in America, in South Africa, in Botswana, in Australia, who are ministers of those countries but also Zapu members? So we're using a, a factual base that that is what happened here in the UK. And I can even give you a bigger example that when I was working for the local government in East London and on election night I was there in charge of the team that was watching the count in West Waltham Forest. I went to the Patel desk there. One of the members was a Conservative. The other member was a Labour Party. The other member was a Liberal. The Patels all got elected to that council. And within a few months, Waltham Forest was twinned with a small town in Pakistan. So you can see the benefits of doing these things. That even if your children are here, even if your nephews are here, let us find a way of bringing them in so that they can come as our members and join you here on your activities that you do. And so, as my parting words to you, I'll be saying, think outside the box, continue the work that you're doing currently here, and whatever new ideas that come to mind, put them in the pot to see how they will benefit the organization and form new links as well. So thank you very much for the invite to come up here today. I hope I've given you food for thought as Zapu. Um, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I think Cecilia challenge is What processes have we got in place to make sure we make things happen for the future? And the Cecilia challenge is history of bringing our history back. Um, and I say I've got a task of closing this down, I'll call upon our chairman, who Comrade Nitov. I'm sure Comrade Nitov, so I work hard. Who's a spammy, who's a suman and go, my head of Sumis or so on. It was nigger on parting words. It's going in a walk around the way of Namda. It's going in a long, 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 Niabo and the color
This is Matilda Broadcasting Corporation, inspired by the past.